the mental fantasy boil up in your head, busting nuts, losing your energy. I used to binge porn two hours every night. I finally quit with these four principles. Principle number one, integrate your dark sexuality. Every man has the primal urge to fuck. As guys, we all have this urge to take the feminine, to conquer it in some sense. And the most primal form we do it is through sex. What separates a integrated man from a weak simp is that he understands his deep primal sex drive, but isn't fooled by its allure. When you develop a self-image that is high value, you stop seeking sex in the, in the form of need. Because when you seek sex in the form of need, that is like the most repelling thing to women. You hear about this all the time, how women want a high value man. And being high value is no different than simply having a better self image of yourself. A self image where you are in abundant relationship with the feminine, where you're not in this desperate seeking state of the feminine. And that's really what separates a integrated man from a weak simp is the form of desperation. All that desperation is comes from a low self image. So you see yourself as unworthy and then you go on chasing and chasing and needing, but you never get it because your very act of needing is what is repelling. So being in tune with your sexuality means that you've got to change your self image of yourself. You have to stop seeing yourself as a seeker. And instead, you have to start feeling that you are worthy of it. You are worthy of it and that you don't need to go out seeking. And when you finally feel that way, you no longer are enslaved by your sexual desires. You have them integrated because when you do not chase, things don't run away from you. In fact, when you hold your attention sacred, things start to be attracted to you. And that's what it means to become magnetic is you're no longer dispersing all of your valuable energy out, whether that's the form of your seed. So busting nuts and, and losing your energy or to your mental energy and your sexual energy in the sense of, are you caught up by lust and attention? The more you let the mental fantasy boil up in your head, the more energy you are literally offloading. Think of the female as the magnet and you're being attracted to her and your energy is just being sucked, sucked, sucked away from her. But to become high value, you have to integrate your sexuality, which simply means instead of radiating energy out and letting it be sucked away, whether through where you look, but also with where you spill your seed, rather than that, hold your energy sacred. And when you do that, now the, the process is flipped, the magnet, now you become the magnet and the energy of females start looking towards you. Now, it's hard to understand this in a phase when you're really struggling with women, but try this out and don't call it, don't call it woo-woo until you give it a long shot for at least a couple of months. Keep yourself in this state where you value your energy and I promise you, you're going to start to get attention from females. And whether you decide you're going to act on that attention, you become better at selectively choosing where to place your attention because a high value man doesn't just give his attention freely. It's a prize. So you have to flip the cycle and when you integrate your dark sexuality and stop becoming magnetized by the outer world, whether that's by females or money or shiny objects, but instead you become the magnet, energy then becomes attracted to you. Practice this awareness of where you're placing your energy, whether you're rating it out or letting it be drawn to you and catch yourself when you're doing it the wrong way. Principle number two, sexual energy is creative energy. So when your sex energy is flowing unblocked, this energy is exactly what gave rise to the Mona Lisa of Da Vinci, to the coil of Tesla. 
Tesla was actually a celibate and he practiced semen retention because he knew the power of sexual energy and when you channel it correctly it leads to the most marvelous creativity and manifestations that a rational mind cannot create. But when you repress your sexuality into the depths of your psyche, your sexual energy creates a prison of lustrous fantasy. And first, this manifests unconsciously as creepiness, which is what repels women, right? This neediness, this creepiness, this, this hidden shame behind your sexuality. And if taken to its extreme levels, it progresses into coercion, into rape, into torture, into the darkest forms that the male sexual dark side can express. Hell, essentially. And it is for this exact reason that women have a defense mechanism to smell a creep from a mile away. If you've ever been in interaction with women, you know how good they are at this. They might be so good at it that they reflect your creepy energy right back onto you, which it then reinforces this identity of how you'll never be attractive, women will never like you. Well, chances are it's because you're exuding that kind of energy. And it's not you, like you are not the one who is inadequate of women. It's that you think you're the kind of guy who's inadequate of women. So again, we're going back to point one. We have to change that self image, right? What are you repeating in your thoughts? And it takes self-awareness. You need to develop this over time, which is why meditation is so important. Meditation isn't just a 30 minute sit on your cushion activity. What it should really do is train you to become aware 24 hours of the day, or at least become more aware so that you can catch yourself when you have negative, low self-esteem thoughts that do not serve you in becoming the kind of, do not serve you in being the kind of person that you want a female to be attracted to. And so what we have to do here is we have to be aware of our stagnant sexual energy. And we have to learn to circulate it, develop authentic self-esteem. We need a healthy, confident, but not arrogant self-esteem. Self once we start to see ourselves that way, women will naturally start to notice us. It's not rocket science. It's just the interplay of energy. Everything is plus and minus, positive and negative, right? You just have to flip the poles and instead of giving attention away, instead you become the magnet of energy. And you do that when you're grounded in your own self-esteem and a worthy self-image. So develop authentic self-esteem, spend time in nature. Nature grounds us and literally gets us to the roots of our primalness. Right? When we spend so much time in civilization, we become this frail and, and weak version of ourselves because literally nature is the feminine. When you go out in nature as a man, you breathe in the feminine, you rejoice in it. Women are no different. We have to learn to love, honor, and praise women without being simpy. There's a difference. There's a huge difference in that. We have to meditate. And fourthly, we have to lift. Lifting is really one of those keystone habits that makes everything else in life fall into place. It builds you discipline. It builds you self-love. It builds you self-awareness through physical awareness. And it builds you, most obviously, an aesthetic physique. Women don't want a slob. Women want a man who takes care of himself, right? So when you develop the proper self-esteem and the proper body, the proper attitude, the proper groundedness and calmness, you literally become magnetic as a man. Principle number three, you wouldn't fuck a dead body, would you? Don't be fooled by the allure of a meat bag. Females are the epitome of appearance, and ultimately all appearances are illusory. Now here's what I'm not saying. Reject women and your primal attraction to their physical beauty. Here's what I am saying. Marvel in women, honor them, love and thank them. But you have to go deeper. See them as their true nature, beings of spirit and light, 
beyond their superficial veil of form. You start to see that what you're really looking at is a goddess, but you're being deluded by her form. The attachment to form is one of the greatest causes of disease in the world. The aging physical body is nothing but a meat bag, a vessel to carry the eternal formless. And this vessel, this meat bag, this body might be very beautiful, just the same as a, a flower or a fruit at its ripening. But like flowers, like fruits, the body withers. So it's a mistake to identify solely with the body and see that as your form of salvation. So the body is only a vessel to carry the eternal formless. And it's the eternal formless spirit inside that turns this quote-unquote dead meat into a sacred life. A wonderful magnetic energy emanates from every spirit. And it is this which creates the sexual polarity and in turn creates the mystery of attraction. So it's not the body per se, but it's the energetic emanation, the, the energy radiating out from a beautiful female body that marvelously attracts you. It's the form that's, a, that's the illusion. It's the energy that gives you the feeling. So when you see through the form, you stop being fooled by it. You, when you start to understand that that is what is attracting you, it's the energy and, and the, the form is just the, the appearance of the energy manifest. You stop mistaking your attraction for the mere form of the meat bag. As Jesus said, Lay not up your treasures where moth and rust doth corrupt. Be in the world, but not of it. That's when you become free as a man. Finally, principle number four. You're not giving anything up. Relapse is okay. Now that I've planted that in your subconscious, you'll probably relapse sometime this week or month. And that's fine. That's good, in fact. Because... What's not conducive to progress on this journey is beating yourself up into this all or nothing mentality of counting your days of, oh, I've gone 69 days without consuming. You have to realize that the vicious cycle of shame in relapse is exactly what is causing your recurring shame and relapse. If you're identified with the person who's trying to quit porn, you're attachment to not watching porn is exactly what will bring you back to it. It's like me telling you, don't think of a monkey in a suit. You repeat to yourself, I won't watch porn today. I won't watch porn today. I won't watch porn today. And guess what happens tomorrow or in three hours, right? You know what will happen next. You, you give power by giving energy to what you want less of. I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna, you're giving it more energy. To reduce this addiction, you don't give energy to it. Like 632 days of abstinence, 632 days of abstinence will not save you from this addiction. If you're still identified as the addicted person who's trying to quit. Quitting porn involves a flip in your self-image. Because as the shifted self-image, as the person you want to be, you're literally not giving anything up. What could you be giving up? As your porn-addicted self, you will think that you are. But as your mission-driven, purposeful self, you know that this is complete bullshit. And so the only way to quit is to identify as who you want to be in this moment, not who you will eventually become in some imaginary future. Because guess what? The future can be put off for an entire lifetime. You can say tomorrow and tomorrow say tomorrow and tomorrow, tomorrow say tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. There's no end to the future. It's an illusion. You cannot keep putting it off and you cannot keep counting the days because you're still identified with someone who is fundamentally still attached to it. The present is the only place that is undeniable. The present is the only place that you can ever be. Right now, I recorded this hours ago, days ago, weeks ago, months ago, 
but you're watching it in the present. And it doesn't matter when you're watching this. Here you are in the present. And I'm in the present recording this. And when I look at your comments, I'm going to be in the present. There's no escape to the present. It's just how you decide you want to project your self-image in the present moment. So I encourage you to look into meditation, look into lifting, build your self-awareness because you fundamentally have to identify as a different person in order to curb this addiction. I'm going to make more videos on this subject, but in the meantime, wish you the best of luck. Actually, you don't even need luck because if you really want to quit, then that's who you are. But hopefully I've made it clear that everything hinges on the self-image of the present moment. And when you develop a self-awareness by noticing your thoughts, noticing the repeating thought patterns, and you realize your thoughts are not you, but at the same time, you can choose which thoughts to believe and let the other ones pass. When you consciously choose the kind of thoughts you have in your mental diet. When you choose, when you create your mental diet intentionally, then that's when you create a self-image of being the kind of person who is worthy of an attractive woman. And it is only because you don't think you are worthy of one that you are addicted to porn. So I hope that was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. Hit the subscribe. I'd love to have you join back on the next video. Leave a comment below and let me know if there's any particular point that I wasn't clear enough on that you would like to see elaborated in a future video. I'd be more than happy to do that. Other than that, wishing you a life to live for and nothing else. All right, that's it for this one. Have a fantastic life. Peace out. Love you.